Living Adaptive. The goal is to adapt and thrive despite the adversity you face. You're going to have to have that little voice inside of you trying to push yourself. I set a vision for myself and now I'm seeing it come to fruition. I'm grateful for losing my leg. There's just some things you must endure in life. You might crash. You can find a purpose in your suffering. I'm not going to stop. You do everything you possibly can. We want to change the world. I'm going to adapt to it and make it the way it works for me. Take what it is from life that you want and enjoy it. What's up, everyone? My name is Scott Davidson, and this is Living Adaptive. Today, we have an amazing show for you. But before we get going, we got to keep fundraising because the Range of Motion Project, the mission still keeps going. We've got reckless adaptive hats. I cover production costs. Every single penny you spend on these hats is going straight to the Range of Motion Project where kids get outfitted with prosthetic legs and adults, too. But there's something special about the kids when I see them running, you know, and out there moving because I was one of those kids that couldn't move that much at points. So, like, seeing that mobility in action is beautiful. And we love our range of motion product team and we still are climbing today today we have an amazing guest this guest is representing also the outdoor community in some ways this guest has done some amazing things in understanding social media and in general this guest has been so supportive to the disability community she's a friend to the disability community so we today have cami york fern on thank you cami for being here thank you scott for having me Cammy, I'm really excited to have you here because first you rep a, a very important product, a product I use, and I'll get into that later. But like this product, Osprey, that you represent, you know, it's been very supportive of the disability community. What attracts Osprey to the disability community and yourself to like come out here and give us a stage, give us some sort of voice here because you don't have to do that. Your company doesn't have to do that and you don't have to do that. Well, part of our mission and values is that the outdoors is for everybody. And we, as a company, are truly working on creating an inclusive environment that embodies everybody. Um, So we're really excited to work with Romp and with the disability community to help them get outside and enjoy the things that the rest of us who are able-bodied do as well. So as a brand, we really want to be that mentor and that place that people can come and feel included. And so this is a place to learn about nature and to learn about different activities and be encouraged to try something for the first time. Maybe somebody has never been mountain biking or kayaking or is afraid to go hiking Um, maybe they just got a new set of legs and they're learning how to climb and how to use them. And so that's one of the big things that we've worked with Romp on is their climb of Cotopaxi every single year. Um, So we support them through product and we also support them through telling these stories because that's truly how you get the word out and truly how you encourage people to get into the outdoors in this community is by telling stories of people who have done these things and who are successful, um, but also people who have failed and that's okay. And like, if you go and you cl- you only make it halfway up the mountain one time, that's okay. You can try again. Um, so that's, that's really like why we're here and supporting this community. It's a rare thing to find within a for-profit company that's making gear, producing actual gear. You're actually producing a product, which is pretty rad in itself, that you find this support that's here. You said the words range of motion project and so did I. You've been part of teams to support it. You've personally been fundraising teams. You're personally connected to the people running the Range of Motion Project. Why the Range of Motion Project? Why jump in with them? They mean so much to me because I actually went to high school with LP, who is um, one of their directors. And so having a really solid relationship helped build the foundation that Osprey has and helps continue that relationship that we have with Romp. And they're also doing some really amazing things, um, making prosthetics available to people across the country that cannot afford them. Um, We think that that is a really important cause to support and to help people get out into nature, which is ultimately our goal as a company. We want to get as many people outside as possible. Man, you went to school with the LP of the Range of Motion Project. And, you know, she's been the social movement she started with the Range of Motion Project is unlike what I've seen. And what the Range of Motion Project does, why I tied up with the Range of Motion Project is first, I'm thankful they would have me. Second, that we're actually on the floor there. We're actually out there outfitting people with prosthetic legs. It's not like this is a sporting event or something and all the power to sporting events and things like that. But this time it's actually on the ground where an adaptive person is leading from the front, supporting others, bringing healthcare equality. And it's turned into this 
monster movement. I mean, this movement is so powerful. The adaptive athlete has has a place at the table with Osprey, which is amazing to me because again, you don't have to give a place at the table. Your packs are going to sell anyways. I'm, I brought this to the interview. I've got my talent 22. This Hell yeah. Boy, yeah. This bad boy saved me on uh, my last hike, by the way. Um, it was, uh, I, I, car- I carried so much gear in it and I was so injured and some of the romp team knows this. So I had so much extra gear with me and my AFOs were just done. They didn't do anything for me. I strapped everything that was packed and it was up there. The point being is that these packs work, they're selling themselves, but yet you still, you, you create ambassador places for, for people that are adaptive. What, what kind of adaptive athlete is Osprey att- attracted to? We are really attracted to those athletes that have a unique story to tell and those that have encountered some type of hardship and overcome it and are able to share that with the community. I love that mention because like I did see a double amp on your page and I thought like to me, the fact that Osprey would even talk to me, I was born different. I'm not like, I'm not missing legs. So it's not attractive to a lot of sponsors and stuff. At this point, I'm not missing legs. But I do have a significant disability and I can't imagine when I was growing up in the late 80s, early 90s, that anyone would care about us, anyone whatsoever, because no one cared. And now we're seeing organizations step up, companies step up and actually give us a place at the table because it's not always the prettiest person to um, look at that's just wearing AFOs or you know, whatever other adaptation is there. Cause it's not maybe as attractive or looks as difficult, but our lives are just as difficult. And just the fact that you would give a place to all of us is an amazing thing. A lot of listeners are struggling right now. 2020 has been so tough. What people don't know about Cami, what people don't know about you is that you understand social media better than probably most of the country that even works in that area. You're highly successful. You're sought after to talk about these things. This is one of the biggest reasons why having you here today is so important because right now we have so many people within the adaptive community that live by social media. They base their self-worth on social media. They base so much on it. They're refreshing the screen to see how many views, how many hearts and stuff. And they're struggling and comparing themselves to others and saying, why not me? Do you have like a healthier approach to this whole idea of social media? Yeah, Scott, I think this is a really interesting topic. And the first thing that I would want to say is that your follower count really doesn't matter as much as you think it does. I personally work for a brand that has over half a million followers and myself have close to 900, I think. So even my account is fairly small um, when you're looking at what I manage. And when we look at the ambassadors that are on our team and how I've kind of cultivated and built that program from the ground up, I am way more interested in working with somebody that has a story to tell because we have the platform. Osprey has our blog, our social media channels, our Instagram page, we have the means to get this story out to lots and lots of people. So if you have 200 followers, if you have 500 followers, if you have 10,000 followers, it doesn't really matter to us. I think the more important part is that you are an authentic voice, that you are vulnerable and you're willing to open up and share your story. Um, Because I think this question also relates to this concept of DE&I that's been talked about in the industry for quite some time. So diversity, equity, and inclusion. And so when you're talking about the adaptive community, the outdoors is trying to make this whole segment more inclusive. And so when you see people that look like you in a company's advertisement or on their blog or in their stories, um, it makes you feel connected to that brand more. And so that's what we're really hoping to accomplish by working with Romp is to showcase more of these stories so that more people in the adaptive community can feel welcomed into this space. A lot of people listening here run nonprofits. Your your close high school friend runs a nonprofit that's highly successful right now. There's others that are struggling just starting or they're just trying to brand. I don't know how many people I talk to per week that are adaptive individuals that are looking to brand, whether an artist, a comedian, an athlete or whatever. They're looking for ways to brand. And I tell them, you know, I really don't know how to do well in social media there because it's not one of my, you know, one of my very first things that I go to when I start building some sort of content. What is something like, what is a tip we can give back to this audience that can improve as they're going along within this area, how to drive in a little bit more traffic? This is going to sound a little outside of the box, but I would say be vulnerable. And 
whether that's by writing a blog post, maybe your company doesn't have a blog or your blog's been dormant for a while, like tell your story on your blog um, or get into Instagram stories and, and open up about who you are and what your mission is and what your business hopes to accomplish and show the human side of things. I think we all often get caught up in this concept of FOMO, but also the idea that the people behind these social media accounts aren't real. Um, but we are, there's, there's human beings on the other end of the line. And so what I've really seen as a successful tactic is people opening up and sharing their stories, maybe for the first time, and maybe it's a company that is sharing some of these harder to talk about stories, um, for the first time as well. Is Osprey going to TikTok? Like, are you guys going to buy into the hype? <laughs> oh, TikTok. Um, I have spent hours on TikTok personally, and it's not something that we are going to get into yet. We are exploring it as an avenue, but um, as a brand, you have to be really conscious and purposeful about the content you produce. And so we're looking at the viability of, do we have a seat at this table? Because TikTok is kind of a little more like fun and goofy and a lot of like lip syncing. Yeah. Um, so we're just trying to figure out like how we would fit into that. It's totally video memes at its best. If you want to see me falling in Osprey gear on TikTok, I can gladly put up like four of those videos. But on a serious note, yeah, TikTok's been hitting a lot. We see a lot of movement towards there. Cammy, you could be a social media manager for anyone. Like when you have this success, I've seen the hype around you. You could be a social media manager for pretty much anyone. Why Osprey? This is a great question. And I enjoy working at Osprey because they align with my personal values. And so one of the things that hopefully we'll get into later in this interview is this idea that all brands have values and need to stand behind them. Um, I think the outdoor industry has a lot of space to grow when it comes to that. But as a woman who is half black, um, this has been a really challenging year for me personally in that respect. But I'm so proud to work for a company that is pushing the envelope and pushing that conversation forward. So that's that's really why I continue to work here. Okay, so you definitely work for a really cool company. You do a lot of great things, but you're not just a social media manager. And that's the one thing I like to bring to this show is like, yeah, we got somebody with a little bit of power, some clout, everything going on, but like, who are you? Like, who is Cammy? Um, well, I'm an ex-soccer player who hasn't played in a while because I have some very intense knee injuries. Um, but in general, I'm just someone that enjoys being outside. I'm a mountain biker. I drive a Jeep. I enjoy off-roading. Um, I love adventuring with my dog, Bella. I like to hike and camp and sleep in my truck and like pretty much anything outdoorsy. That is me. That's a shock with your uh, involvement with Osprey. I couldn't see that coming. You played soccer at the University of Wisconsin, you know, so you're pretty... Um, What's the term kids use nowadays? Alpha, like powerful or something, <laughs> with it, right? I'm, I'm dating myself. I'm 40. Everyone that's watching and listening, so like, uh, I'm trying to keep up with the terms. But you're pretty alpha out there. You, can, you kind of get after it. Were you always like that? I have always been a go getter. Um, I'm also a soccer coach on the side. That's kind of how I keep soccer in my life now that I can't play as much as I used to. Um, my nickname growing up used to be the Road Runner. Like I would, people just couldn't keep up with me. Speedy Gonzalez, I'm super fast. I would run around the soccer field everywhere. I would drive my parents crazy because I was always running around the house and like they could never catch me. And um, I was never that kid to like sit still and just want to like lay back and watch TV. I always wanted to build sand castles in the backyard or like go climb a tree or like ride my bike. Like, yeah, you couldn't keep me still for more than five minutes. Okay, so you've been in social media for a while. We always have a segment, especially with personalities. We have this segment all the time where we discuss best and worst comments you've received. This could be either you personally or handling the accounts for Osprey. What's what's one of the worst comments you received first? Um, oh, man, I was hoping we could start with a funny one. Um, let's go funny. Let's go funny. So this summer... This is an Osprey related comment. So um, I managed our Facebook account and a woman wrote in to us this summer saying, Hey, I just purchased one of your bags and I'm really disappointed. I'm going to return it because I took it on a hike and it got dirty. Oh shit. And I was like, well, 
you <laughs> purchase a bag to go hiking, like, of course it's going to get dirty. Do you buy hiking boots and expect them to stay clean forever? Um, so everyone in the office kind of had a good laugh about that one that she, she was literally going to return her bag because it got a speck of dirt on it. And she Dude, was I upset. Live for those. I live for those reviews where somebody has one, you know what I mean? Where it's just like completely off the wall. I live for chaos sometimes. And, and that fits it. I mean, we're here to get dirty at Osprey. Like we, we've seen packs come in for repair that have obviously been used for 10 or 15 years, have never been washed, have grime and stories and grit to them. So this one just kind of like made me chuckle. Do you guys test these packs? Like, do you personally go out and you guys are like, let's see how far we can take these things. Yeah. We do some pretty interesting product testing with some, st with some of the packs. The teams that work there, this is a question that I'm really curious about. Like, do you get any of the, like, do you have like a team that does like really extreme stuff? Like, like uh, for instance, packing like free soul loan with a pack on or doing something nuts, you know what I mean? Jumping out of stuff, wearing an Osprey pack. We don't have any free soloers on the team. Um, we have quite a few rock climbers. Um, yeah. I don't think anybody's jumped out of a plane with a pack on. Sure. We, we have an old commercial. I think it's from like the nineties where we took one of our giant transporter duffels and, um, uh, dragged it behind a horse. And there was like a person in there, I think. Um, do you, a, do you have that video? Do you actually have a video of a person being dragged with like, we, we do. <laughs> I'll oh, have to God. dig that up for you. Please find that. So we can add that to this. I mean, like it, it's hilarious. What's the worst comment you guys have received? Um, we have definitely been called some expletives before. Um, and I think one of the worst ones this year has just been people saying that we're going to burn your gear um, because well, we don't agree with the agenda that you're pushing. And that's there. always really hard. But at the same time, if you don't agree with a brand's values, you really shouldn't be purchasing their products. We're going to get comments. Like I get comments. I was telling you earlier that like I was walking through Target. I needed something, a cable for this interview and everybody's looking at my legs again. We're going to get comments all the time and you get comments on social media. What do you find is the best way of handling these things? Yeah, that's really tough because you're right. We are always going to get them. And so it's kind of become an accepted day-to-day -day thing. Um, I think the best thing is to identify the trolls versus the people that actually want to have an intelligent conversation because you have plenty of people on the internet who are just out there to ruin your day and that is their sole mission. And then you have people who might be ignorant and are saying something mean because they don't know better or they are trying to expand this conversation and don't know how to get into it. So for us, it's more about looking at the intent behind the comment and is it even worth continuing the conversation? Most of the time, it's not. Most of the time, they're just pressing your buttons. How does somebody get reposted by Osprey? Oh, um, we have a submission process. So you can just send photos to social at osprey.com um, and I vet them. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, I mean, we feature everything from iPhone photos to professional photos. Um, as long as it has a cool story to go along with it, we love sharing user-generated content. What is the responsibility that the outdoor industry has within the disability community? Is there a responsibility? Absolutely, 100%. Um, this is a really tough question and a really good question, but um, I think the outdoor industry has a responsibility to be more inclusive and accessible as well to the entire outdoor community. And I think for a very long time, the industry has lived in this little bubble where we're afraid to step out of it. And we are having these conversations about how do you make the outdoors more inclusive? And as a brand like Osprey, who has this value of the outdoors are for everyone, how do you define everyone? And we have to go back to the drawing board and look at how we've defined it in the past and what it means to us now, because it's fluid, really. And it really is the industry's responsibility to make sure that everybody feels safe going outside, that everybody feels welcome going outside. Um, and I think that starts from within. So one of the things that LP and I talked about was this idea that brands need to define what their values are and stand behind those values. And so 
with Osprey, since our value is the outdoors are for everyone, we need to work on how to help people over this barrier. So like, what is your barrier to the outdoors? What is keeping this particular person or this group of people from getting outside? And how can we be part of the solution? You just talked about the disability community and getting us involved. You've been around it for a while. I love to get outsiders viewpoints. I want it like personal side. This podcast kind of keeps it real. We're not we're not very corporate. We're not anything. We're kind of like a little bit punk rock. You know what I mean? We kind of ride with it a little bit. And one of those things, though, is getting really personal and in depth to understand you more. You've been around. You've been around amputees. You've been around limb differences, everything under the sun, you know, by now, if you've been with Romp. What is one of your favorite experiences from the disability world? Honestly, um, working with Romp on their Cotopaxi climb has been the most enlightening and pretty inspiring project for me. Um, as somebody who is really into hiking in the outdoors, um, I hike a 14er every summer with my dad and seeing seeing other people do a climb as hard as Cotopaxi is super inspiring to me because I have big mountain dreams. Um, and I think that we all kind of like make excuses sometimes or let things get in the way. Um, and so watching this whole group of, um, people go out and climb Cotopaxi is phenomenal. And then for me as a storyteller, getting to tell those stories and talk to them about what their experience was like and what their challenges were and how they were feeling while they were actually climbing. Um, that's what really gets me going and gets, keeps me inspired. Storytelling is very important to you. That is your world. Why is storytelling so important to Cammie? Um, I'm an empath. And so I feed off of other people's emotions. And it's really important to me to share people's stories and to give them that space to open up. Um, vulnerability can be a really hard thing. And working with Romp, um, one of the climbers, Estefania, wrote us a blog about climbing Cotopaxi and how she had just gotten a new knee um, like right before the trip and she didn't know how to use it. And so she was at one of the huts and one of the other members of the team was teaching her how to use it and showing her how to use it the night before. Um, and the story too was a little bit about how she wasn't as fast as some of the other climbers. And so there was some concern that she wasn't going to summit in time, but she did, she made it. Um, uh, even um, against all odds that she was having to learn how to use this new knee and um, being up at altitude like that can be really hard for a lot of people. Um, and so that's not only inspiring to me, I want, I hope to share those stories to inspire other people and say, look what this person did. You can absolutely do that too. That you can actually see this listeners and watchers. You can actually see this go down. You can see her climb. Estefania, you can see her climb by watching it in her shoes. And I was brought to you also by Osprey, Merle, and a bunch of other companies that have really come together and supported the disability community, which is a beautiful thing. A lot of times we miss out on understanding how much support we do have out there. We often focus on what we don't have. In this case, we do have something. We do have Osprey that's out here giving us a place at the table, which is pretty rad. Cammie, we're throwing a lot on your lap today. There's been a lot of questions. I mean, like some of them are really heavy, a lot more heavier than because you're speaking almost about policy in some ways. We're talking social media too, though. How do we make social media more inclusive? I think that's a really great question, Scott. And there are a few things that we can do. So as a community, as an outdoor community, we can start showcasing more images that show the disabled community um, and we're trying to do a better job of that at Osprey. Um, and so again, I welcome any photo submissions that anybody who's listening has. Um, another thing that we can do when we're thinking about the disabled community is um, meta tags. And so um, one of the things that Instagram introduced a, about a year ago was this concept of um, meta tagging your photos so that someone who is blind can scroll through and still be able to hear the caption and hear are some of the comments that are being um, placed there. Um, another thing that we can do is continue to share stories via the blog. Um, I think that that's a really great way to get these messages out and 
to share them and do things like this. I think this is awesome as well. Um, the more that we can talk about it as brands and get the conversation going, the more it will catch on. And I think one of the things that we really want to convey also is that this is not a fad. Um, the disabled community is here, um, not, not going anywhere ever. And like you said, it's something that anybody on this planet can become a member of at any time. Um, and that can be kind of scary for sure. Like anybody can join the disability community at any point. We're all part of this human family. If you live long enough, you will join the disability community. If you're lucky to live long enough, you will lose your mobility. And I talk about that a ton about what the adaptive athlete means, meaning in this case, I'll just explain it here. But like the adaptive athlete to me is that we are the human condition magnified. And that's the adaptive person in general. If you watch, we hit the wall at birth at a younger age or you know at an older age but we will tell you how to navigate this wall how to live with this wall get around this wall whatever it is or or adjust to life as it is right there but you can watch and see that you can still live a dynamic life and thrive despite what you're facing and that's for everybody out there that is a human condition message and so i feel very grateful to to have those adversities to tell those stories you know and i think it's also really important to talk about this concept of what's your mountain and that's a hashtag that Romp has created and tried to foster with storytelling because everybody's mountain is different. And so success looks different to everybody. It's going to look different for me than it will for you, than it will for any of the climbers that climb for Romp. Um, and I think it's always evolving as well. And so one of the ways that we, that this ties into making social media more inclusive is I think that ties back to the storytelling piece. So like defining what is your mountain and being vulnerable and talking to your social media audience about what that is um, and being open to telling your story because climbing your own mountain, summiting your own mountain, those are all successes and things that should be celebrated um, on a, on a continuum scale. Um, Cause like I said, it, your, your mountain will always be changing. And I think that that's an important thing for us to all look at internally um, and look at externally too. I think there's a lot of judgment that goes on in the social media community. And it's important to not judge somebody based off of their story. Cammy, what is your mountain right now? You said the words mountain. I'd love to, if you could share with us, what are you, what's your mountain? This one, yeah, this is kind of a heavy, heavy mountain. Um, mine is more related to the color of my skin. Um, we are in the midst of an election um, and I'm not sure where we'll be at by the time this recording gets put out, but um, it's been an uphill battle being a biracial woman in this country and feeling like I am enough and feeling like I belong and feeling important when we have half a country who is sitting there saying, you don't matter, your rights don't matter, we don't support you. Um, and so that's why I'm really lucky to have a, an amazing family and friend base. And I work for an amazing company um, that supports me in that respect as well. Um, so that's my mountain right now is, is being a biracial woman in this country that is not super welcoming. Do you think the adversity on this mountain has led you here to us, the disability world, you know, like the empathy, maybe, I don't know. Yeah, I do. Um, one of the things that I've been praised for this year is my vulnerability and being open about sharing my story. Um, I'm adopted. My um, adoptive parents are both white. And so there's been challenges for me about growing up as a, a black child with white parents. Um, but I've been able now, um, as an adult, I'm 32, um, to open up and tell my story. And that led me to interesting conversations with LP, which I think led me here. And, um, this concept of, of mountain, like my, my mountain is very different from your mountain, um, and very different from the mountain of somebody in the disabled community, but that doesn't make one mountain any harder or more challenging than the other. It just makes it my mountain. Um, and so I think that's why I love storytelling is because it does open up this vulnerability and you learn about other people and you learn what makes them tick and what makes them cry and what makes them laugh um, and what their mountains are. And for me, I want to be somebody who can help you on that mountain journey. 
you know, talking about mountains is like pretty much the root of this whole thing that I do here is like, whether you call it a mountain, the adversity, the disability, or, you know, various adversities that come from all walks of life that we all face, you know, telling those stories on these mountains is an amazing thing. We get that from your blog. What else do we get from your blog that you do for Osprey? Um, we get a lot. So, um, part of my job is sharing, um, syndicated stories. So those are things that are a little bit more lighthearted. So, um, like top 10 places to hike in Colorado or the top five 14ers if you're a beginner. So you'll find content like that, um, which can help you trip plan and get excited and use as motivation. But then you'll also find those deeper stories that you can connect to on an emotional level. Um, whether that's a story about how one of our packs s saved your life, um, whether that's a story of summiting your own mountain and what that means to you, whether it's a story about failure. Um, we talk about a lot of different things on our blog. You know, I've had your pack. I've had this pack for a short period of time and I've seen a bunch of stuff, some national parks already in just a few months, you know, this latest pack that I have. It's been a, a great device for me and I literally do strap my legs using a bungee right to the helmet strap because I do mountain bike a lot too. I'm not very awesome. good at it. I would love to give you guys 548 really solid tips on a, how to hike when you have shitty legs. Like just like it's just like a, a 38 page um, blog post for anybody interested. Um, no, on a serious note, I, I did peruse what's going on there and what you're writing about. And it does run a wide gamut of things. So it's like a very nice site to put together. What people might not know that are listening is that at one point that blog was kind of flat and you drove in a ton of traffic. You're a go-getter across the board. So um, that's that's a beautiful thing. We always like people that are, like, are, are driven and stuff. This is the one last thing I really wanted to get into is, is success. Finding that success, like what are the traits, like one or two traits that you notice because you've been around some ultra successful people in the outdoor industry, in the sporting industry, you played for Wisconsin, you're a Badger. And so like um, you've had success pretty pretty much across the board. And so like, what do you see? What's a common trait that you see out there for these people, especially in the highest levels of the outdoor industry? Um, I would say that they're not afraid of failure. That's a really big one. Um, I think we grow by trying new things and not being good at them. Another trait that I see is people who want to push the envelope and are constantly looking for new ways of doing things and constantly looking to get their friends into the outdoors and get their friends to try new activities. Um, so I think this combination of people who aren't afraid to, to fail or try new things and, and these people who are wanting to push that envelope makes a really good recipe for adventure. Um, and I guess if I had to leave this podcast with one thing, it's that dare to try something new. Um, I started mountain biking about six years ago and I wouldn't consider myself like super good by any means, but it's become my way of healing. Um, I can no longer play soccer. Um, my body just doesn't allow me to do that anymore. I beat it up enough and it said no more. So I needed another outlet. And instead of being frustrated and down about it, which I was for a while, but came out of it, um, I found a new sport and I found something else to pour my heart into. And I think that's something that we can all learn and take something away from is like, don't be afraid to try something new and like always follow your heart. It's out. Adventure is out there. Um, and it leads us to some really amazing places and people. Cammie York Fern, I really appreciate everything you do for our disability community being part of the range of motion project with your high school homie everything you're doing out there with us i really appreciate it the backpack like seriously when i was on angel's landing that that bitch saved me on the wall i didn't know what i was doing and like if i don't care lp can release this i crawled i crawled at one point so you can see me wearing an osprey backpack and crawling a little bit because like my legs aren't stable right now so um your gear is awesome i use it all the time so we appreciate that but better than anything you have a moral message behind that gear you brought us into this community and i appreciate you guys even putting it on the line coming out here and talking because a lot of organizations a lot of companies will come out here and say we support such and such messages and maybe if that doesn't work for you don't purchase our product we purchase your product i purchase your product and i appreciate all you do so thank you for being here yeah and thank you again for having me um, and yeah, just one last reminder, the outdoors are for everybody. We are here for this. 
Remember, go to livingadaptive.com to find previous episodes, show notes, contacts for guests like this guest, links to social media accounts, and a bunch of other good stuff. So go there. Peace. Peace.